Hi, my name is Zwanda, Zwanda Rasiwera, and today I'll be bringing you guys with six easy steps on creating a personal budget. Although creating a personal budget doesn't seem like an exciting task to do, it is very, very important on making sure that your financial household is in order. So if you do not already have a budget in place, take a pen and a paper and let's get started. Also, if you already have a budget in place, just stay put. There might be some information that I can share that could be of help to you or that can help you to be effective or more effective in your budgeting. One advice that I would like to give for those who do not have a budget in place, go to Google, search for budgeting templates. You'll find many of them, could be Excel, could be in a form of an app. Choose whichever one that is suitable for you. So the benefit to those templates is that they already have formulas in place, formulas inputted in them. So you do not have to worry about the math. They do the math for you. All you have to worry about is being consistent in your budgeting as well as implementing your budget. Another advice that I would just like to give is that make sure that you're honest with your finances. So for your budget to work, you need to have a good picture, a clear picture of how your uh, spending behavior looks like so that if there is any you are able to make those adjustments so let's get going step number one you need to gather all your financial statements this could be your investment accounts it could be your um, credit card uh, bill accounts it could be your uh, banking statement as well as receipts right so if you are the type of person who likes to withdraw money it's very important uh, for you uh, to look into those receipts if you can go for at least the past three months to see where all that withdrawn money has been spent on however if you do not have those receipts since many of us do not really uh, keep receipts you just have to go to your banking statements try to remember what you withdraw that money for and just write a name to uh, uh next to the next to the um the money that you have withdrawn so that you understand where what your expenses what your true expenses are and what you actually spending your money on right step number two calculate your total income so um when we work on a budget we use the net income right so this would be the total amount of salary or income that you get after tax deduction so if you are a salary earner you just need to take your n your net income and that would be your total income However, if you're self-employed, look into the past six months because your income might be variable, might be a variable income, could be different from month to month. So look into the past six months and look into your worst month and take that as an estimate income uh, for your budget. So the reason you, you should do this is that um, it helps you to not overestimate your income and always play in a safe in a safe net so if you happen to make more income than you actually estimated it's you're still safe however if you somehow put a higher income but you ended up getting uh uh below that you might be working on your on, on a tight budget also when it comes to income there are some people who have um extra source of income if you also do have an extra source of income just put that as a part of your income and make the total of your income step number three and i believe this is important this is very important for uh the budget right it's you need to list all your expenses you need to make sure that you list all your expenses your car installment your insurances your your subscriptions etc so uh most of us do not know our expenses by head and if you do not know this is where step number one is important go take those statements go through them one by one and check the things that you spend your money on put each and every one of them down and list them and allocate a value next to them so that you understand your total expenses so also what's important with going through your statement you are able to know how much you you are charged on on things like your banking fees or your credit card fees so that you'll be able to include that in your budgeting as well so step number four you need to differentiate your expenses in terms of fixed expenses and variable expenses so fixed expenses are normally your uh, mandatory expenses right they they are your the, the expenses that you you spend the, the the same amount of money from month to month could be your car installment your rent or your bond things like that your insurance your tax and rates it's, it's normally the same amount from month to month but you all and you can consolidate those and put a total 
you also have variable expenses variable expenses are expenses that normally changes right so uh this could be your gifting it could be entertainment it could be takeouts it could be your fuel because depending on where you go on that month uh it might be more or less than the previous month so you also sum them right but for variable expenses normally these ones changes so what you need to do is that you also look into your total for the uh, past two months and average it out to have an estimate on how much you spend on your very variable um, expenses right so speaking about variable expenses i think it's very important that if you do not already have any an emergency fund that you can start allocating some funds from your income to contribute to your emergency fund so these are important the emergency fund is very important because this caters for your surprise expenses they are expenses that um, we do not cater for in our budget because maybe we do not know that they will come or when they would come right so uh, having an emergency fund just allow you to always have access to money that you can use when surprise expenses um, do come. So you do not have to, uh, to, to disturb the process of your current budget. So let's go to step number five. Step number five would be to balance the two, your income and your expenses. So uh, the goal for this would be to get your income uh, higher than your expenses. And if you do have your income higher than your expenses, you are in for a good start, right? However, if you have your expenses higher than your income, that means that um, you need to make some changes on your budget. And this speaks to the last step, which is step number six. Step number six would be making adjustment to your budget. So uh, I use two steps and I'll share those with you and hopefully they can help you to redistribute funds to areas that are more aligned to your personal goals or also help you to be able to manage your budget better. I use the budgeting philosophy 50-30-20 rule which says that 50% of your income should be um, should be uh, uh, allocated to your needs and 30% uh, of your income should be allocated to your um, to your to your wants and 20% to your savings, right? I don't use it exactly the way it is, but this concept just helps you to be able to know how you distribute your income towards your expenses and what kind of expenses. Also, it helps you when you're able to see uh, if you spend more on your wants uh, or if you spend more on your needs so that you can distribute it evenly in a way that suits you. So this is called personal uh, budgeting for a reason. You just have to make sure that it works for you. So another step that I use is color coding my expenses. So I mark my expenses in terms of necessity. So I mark um, the necessary mandatory expenses in green and I mark um, my nice to have expenses in yellow and I mark my unnecessary expenses in red. This helps me when i want to make adjustment or if there's something that i need to improve in my budget i quickly go to my reds and i know that you know what i can redistribute it i can redistribute it to something that i want to adjust or something that i need to fix so it just helps you to see also how much do you spend on what right so that's it from me i really really enjoy doing this i hope you guys learned something because i did and see you next time bye